he had a habit of taking his clothes off and shouting obscenities in public, and that tended to put people off. You don't say. This was written about the French poet Arthur Rimbaud. He produced all of his published work by the time he was 19 years old. After that, the only writing he did was occasional letters to his family. When he was 16, he wrote letters to the French poet Paul Verlaine, who responded favorably, and Rimbaud traveled to visit him, arriving with his masterpiece, The Drunken Boat. And he lived with Verlaine for a while, at which time he began writing the poems that would make up his only book, A Season in Hell. And he also started taking off his clothes and shouting obscenities in public. Then, as now, it tended to put people off. It's easy to picture a neighbor coming to Verlaine's door, pounding on it and shouting, Verlaine! Verlaine! And Paul comes to the door. What is it? What do you want? What do I want? It's that crazy friend of yours. He's taken off his clothes again and he's cursing at the top of his lungs. Listen, hear that? No. Then you're deaf. They can hear that in Berlin. What do you want me to do? I want you to get him to stop. He's bad for business. He scares people away. I haven't sold a single pastry this morning. Look, Pierre, he's young and full of life. He's a poet. I don't give a shit if he's a pearl diver. I want him to stop. I'm sorry, I can't control him, Pierre. He can't control himself. It's the muse. She's taken hold of him. Bullshit! You can't excuse this kind of behavior because he's a poet. It's not an excuse. It's the truth. Have you read any of his poems, Pierre? The kid's a genius. He's a madman. He's insane. All the same thing, my good man. It's all in how you look at it. Don't give me that. He's crazy. I don't expect some bourgeois baker like you to fathom the depths of poetry. Oh, I'm on to you, Verlaine. Your poems do not. You poets do nothing but drink and argue. You think you are better than everyone else. No, I don't think it, Pierre. You're making my argument for me. Now go away. I have things to do. I warn you, if you don't stop him, I'll call the police. Go ahead. He's just a free spirit. He's not breaking any laws. Indecency. Obscenity. The noise ordinance. Public nuisance. Pierre, you're too worked up. You can't see straight. Try to be calm and rational. You're a businessman, right? Okay, think about it. You have this wild, beautiful, naked young man outside your shop shouting curses. Yes, exactly. Use him to promote your business. What? Oh, Pierre, such a lack of imagination. Listen, come see the naked boy. He's a famous poet. Listen to him shout a blue streak. Have a fine pastry and a cup of espresso. They'll be lining up from here to Paris. Maybe you're right. I know I am. Now go away and give me some peace. Just tell your friend not to come too close to my store. I don't want the health commissioner on my back. Good day, Pierre. Pierre left and went back to his patisserie and took Verlaine's advice. He whipped up a special new pastry, which today we call a dunker, modeled after Rambeau's clapper, and it was so good that when they ate it, people gleefully shouted obscenities in honor of the donut and an imitation of the great French poet, Arthur Rimbaud, who, tired of being exploited for the sake of croissants, eventually put on his clothes, shut his mouth, left Verlaine's home, and never wrote a single line of poetry again.